Hey everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net and this will be part three in my particular basic training series where I'm going to go through and uh, show you guys some of the uh, various things that you can do with trap code particular starting kind of from the basics up and in this tutorial we're going to look at creating our own custom star field for your space scenes or anything else um, and we'll look at some of the pros and cons of some of the presets that are already shipping with particular and then uh, show you how to create what I think is the best version of a star field you can uh, use inside of After Effects. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to do is to create a new composition. So we'll make this uh, 720p, 23.976 frames per second, 7 seconds, this is going to be plenty of time, we'll just call this final. And click OK. All right. And uh, to this we're going to need a solid layer to put particular on, so we'll go layer, new, solid, or hit control Y. We'll call this Particular Stars. Make sure it's comp size, the color doesn't matter, and click OK. We also might want to throw a background in here, so let's just go Layer, New, Solid. Call this BG for background. We'll just make it black uh, for starters, and click OK. And drop that below our Particular Stars. Now, you may be wondering why are you going through all the trouble of creating a star field in particular, um, especially making one from scratch. You might say, hey, you could use a spherical map, um, or you could do a lot of different things. Uh, the problem is, if you were to use a spherical map, you'd have to use a different plugin, uh, perhaps something like uh, Horizon from Trapcode, if you have that. And you're going to have to find a star field that map that you like that's high enough resolution, and it might not fit every need you have. You might want different colored stars. Um, you know, you might want motion blur to look a little different. And there's just a lot of things uh, that you can do with particular that you can't do with any other method. So we'll go ahead and uh, you know concentrate on particular. The second thing you might be asking is, hey, doesn't particular ship with uh, Starfield presets? And the answer is yes, it does. But let's take a look at those. We'll go down here under Animation Presets, under Presets, scroll down here to Trap Code, and we'll go to the Trap Code High Definition Presets under the Particular Effects and scrub down here to the star fields. You see we have Starfield Static 1 and Starfield Static 2. We'll drag Starfield Static 1 out onto our layer and then scrub through the timeline. And if we let's see make this fit. If we scrub here through the timeline, you can see that we have a point where the particles are being emitted from and then they kind of go out in all 3D space and then just stop. Now this is kind of what we're going to be doing, however there is a major problem in my opinion with this particular setup, no pun intended. Let's throw a new camera here, layer new camera, and uh, I'll show you what I mean. Use a 50 millimeter camera and click OK. Let's grab the unified camera tool and if we just scrub around or kind of rotate around you can see that this really isn't that big of a world and that uh, you know you have all these particles really close to the camera and that's not precisely what we want um, and if we want to make this a little more realistic these stars should actually be a lot farther away from the camera and there shouldn't be much parallax when you rotate around because uh, stars are very very distant um, in space from where you are so this really isn't uh, the best look you could adjust some of these settings and uh, that'd be fine, you could get away with it, but I think it's probably a little bit better if we build this from scratch and you'll be able to understand exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it and maybe be able to learn some uh, basic techniques that you can use um, for other things with Trapcode Particular. So let's go ahead and just dump this uh, particular effect off delete it out and then with the layer selected choose effect trap code particular alright so now here we are with just the basic opening with uh, particular emitting a bunch of spheres from a central point now the emitter 
uh, point is fine. We can just use that, or you can use a sphere if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll just stick with a point. What we do want to do, though, is jack up the particles per second. We'll go to 100,000 to start with. You can make this really whatever you want. Got a ton of particles being emitted. Um, the next thing I want to do is increase the velocity up as high as it will go. So we'll go just 9999999. And it basically will cap us out at uh, 30,000 uh, units or pixels per second. So if we scroll through the timeline, you can see that we've got a lot of particles being emitted and moving out very quickly. So what I want to do is basically emit particles over three seconds, or three frames, I'm sorry. And what this will do is will give us a wide variety of uh, particles, and since we have the velocity random up, it'll give us a random velocity, so you'll have stars getting shot out further uh, than others, um, or farther than others, and some will be a little closer. But we want to shut this off at about three frames. So we'll click particles per second to set a keyframe, Go page down and turn the particles per second all the way down to zero. So now if we continue to scrub through the timeline, no more particles are being emitted and we've created really what amounts to our own little Big Bang. And if we come down here to about nine frames, you can see we have lots of stars really far out. If we grab our camera tool and rotate around, this looks much more like a star field that you might find in the night sky or if you're up in space. Um, all the stars are very far away from the camera, not much parallax, and it looks like you have uh, you know, a, a realistic 3D sky, complete with dark areas and you know, more concentrated, and that's just due to the randomness with which particular is throwing these stars out in space. So um, this looks good at frame 9, but if we continue scrubbing in the timeline, those stars continue to get farther and farther away because the velocity is still at uh, 30,000 pixels per second. So pick a frame that you like the look of. Um, if you like 8, 9, 10, whatever it is, we'll stick maybe with 9. And what we're going to do is we want to freeze these particles where they are in time. So if we grab our particular layer again, we'll scrub down here to the physics section, roll that out. You see we have a option here called physics time factor. And what this basically does is control the rate of particular. And we can increase artificially uh, within particular the physics time of the effect basically while not impacting any of the rest of the animation in our scene. So for example if you want this to go at half speed you basically hit 0.5 and particular will use all the settings above but then divide everything by basically half then things will go half as fast or if you want it to go twice as fast you put that up to two and the stars are way far away so we can use this to control how fast particular calculates the various settings uh, independent of your um, composition you know time and uh, that's a very handy feature other thing you can you'll notice is we have a stopwatch which means this uh, particular uh, feature is animatable. So if we click the stopwatch, we'll set a keyframe. We'll hit U to reveal the keyframes here on the on the timeline. Hit page down to go one frame down and set the physics time factor to zero. Now if you scrub through the timeline, you can see that uh, the stars don't move at all past frame 10, or I guess frame 9, not 10. Here we go. So Let's see, this might be a little small uh, for the capture, so let's increase the particle size so you can see a little bit better. Bump these up to maybe 10. So you'll see that uh, we have a big bang here. It starts out, stars continue to get farther and farther away, and then past frame 10, they stick in space, and you can rotate around, and you have a beautiful star field. All right, so one of the problems we have here is you have all this stuff here in the first 10 frames that you really don't want. So there's a couple ways to handle it. Either you can adjust your work area and start it at 10 frames, or you can hit Alt Open Bracket on frame 10 to trim the layer here to just the to start at just the right time. Then come down here to 0 seconds and hit just the Open Bracket without the Alt, and it'll snap the layer to that position. So now everything will be static from frame zero in your timeline. 
then all you need to do is just adjust your uh, layer out so that it takes up the rest of the timeline and you have a star field. But let's say you want to make some adjustments to this. For example, if you note the night sky, not every star is pure white. Well, there's a, a handy way to do this inside particular. If you want to do it very quickly, just come down here to the color random here, and you can increase this up, and you will introduce every different color of the rainbow. I'll increase the size so we can see. So by adding color random to this, we have increased the just the colors overall. We get this plethora of colors, if you will. And we can dial this back so we just introduce a hint of color to it, like so. And then if we dial the size back down, you'll notice just a very slight uh, tint to this. Um, not enough to be distracting, but still enough to add a little more life to your scene. However, there are times when you want to kind of dial in your stars so that they look much more uh, akin to either real life or to something, say for example you were trying to recreate a star field from Star Wars, for say, and those stars are very bluish white and there's not a lot of other color in there. So what you can do is you can take the set color, so instead of at birth you can do random from gradient and then go down to your color over life's time scale and this will randomly assign a color from this gradient to all the different particles. So once again we'll increase the particle size so that we can see a little bit better and if you just go through the presets here you can see that you can click any of these and the stars will grab a random color from that gradient and apply it to one of the random stars. So that's great. What we can also do is adjust this gradient to whatever colors we want and uh, it will update accordingly. Alright, the next thing I want to talk about here is uh, motion blur. And right now we don't have any camera movement, but Particular allows for real 3D motion blur, which is great if you're going to be moving around your scene. So let's uh, take a look at how that works. The first thing I want to do is introduce a little bit of movement to the camera. So the way I'm going to do that is just by simply adding a wiggle to our point of interest. So I'm going to alt-click the stopwatch and type wiggle, open bracket one time a second, maybe 500 pixels, click enter, and if we scrub through the timeline you can see we just kind of move around a little bit, just to add some motion so that we can see what motion blur does inside of our comp here. Uh, once again I've got these stars up pretty big for what I would like, just so that you can see a little bit better. Let's go back to our uh, particular stars layer here and if you want to add just a quick motion blur you can turn on the motion blur settings for the entire comp and then turn on the motion blur for the layer and you will see we've introduced motion blur to our stars which looks pretty good nothing too bad here what it's basically doing is using the settings from the comp settings for motion blur um, the you know uh, shutter length and everything else and applying it to our particular layer now if we want to dial in our own stylized look of motion blur, we can come down here to rendering under motion blur and we can change some of these settings. For right now we have the comp settings, um, so that means if our layer has motion blur turned on in the composition, it will apply it uh, to particular. We can go ahead and turn that off and change the motion blur from comp settings to on. And this will basically use the shutter angle, the shutter phase, and the opacity boost from the motion blur dialog box right here. And as you can see, it's a much different look. So if we turn on motion blur like that, and then change it back to comp settings, you can see that uh, I think the comp settings have a shutter angle of about 180 degrees, and the default for particular 360 so you get much longer streaks. You can also see that this has dimmed out our stars something fierce and what you can do to kind of combat that is to increase the opacity boost. What this will also do though is increase the brightness of the stars even when they're still a little bit as you can see. Alright, so that might not be what you want. There's another way to increase the opacity of the stars while you've got motion blur on it, which doesn't have anything to do with opacity boost, and I think is probably a better way to go, much more uh, realistic to real world. 
and that is to actually introduce high dynamic range to our stars. Starting with Particular 2.0, Particular now supports HDR, high dynamic range. And the way that we apply that is we go to our project settings, we can alt click the bits per channel to go to 32 bits per channel. So now we have the capability of using high dynamic range color. We'll go back to our effects and let's go here to our color over life. If we click the first one, we can select the color. And as you can see, we have uh, instead of 255, 255, 255 for white, we have 111. And we use 0 to 1 as normal range from 0 to 255. But if we go above 1 in any of the colors, we're actually going to get into high dynamic range, assuming that all RGB is above 1. So if we want just pure white, we can hop over here and do a say 5, 5, 5, and that'll be 5 times the uh, brilliance or the pure pure white basically, and click OK. As you can see, we've got very bright white stars here. Um, same thing with color. You can introduce color by going, say, we'll start with 1 on red, we'll say 1.25 for green, and 2 for blue, and if we go see this, Basically, this will tell you what color that is, um, but it's going to look white because you're above one. And once you introduce motion blur, though, when that blurs out, you're going to start seeing some of that color being reintroduced. And as you can see right here on the gradient, as we're going towards the uh, lower dynamic range or standard dynamic range, uh, that starts fading out to a normal color. Let's go ahead and adjust this one as well. This one will change a little bit different. Uh, one two, three, just a little bit different of color. And so when these particles are close to being still, they're going to be um, almost all pure bright white. Still a little bit of, uh, actually let's turn off motion blur so we can see. Turn that to off. As you can see, um, they're pretty white, but they have a little bit of a halo around them with the color. And I think that's the way stars really look in the night sky. Um, but once you turn motion blur on, you end up with those really nice streaks of color, uh, which I think is much more interesting visually. And we can turn the size of the stars back down to maybe 10, and then increase the size random up to, say, 70. And we've got a pretty nice star field. As a final note, if you're doing a lot of movement around inside your comp and you're moving uh, very far either in X, Y, or Z dimensions, you may run into a problem where you are actually getting too close to the stars. And the way that you can combat that is by simply allowing more time for the stars to go away from the center point of your composition and then adjust the size of the stars up till you get the size that you want. And this way you'll basically create a bigger sphere within which to fly around. So uh, that's just another handy tip for Starfield. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got some useful information out of it. And hopefully this will increase your uh, ability to manipulate particular to get the effects that you want. If you have any questions, as always, please post them in the trap code form uh, section. I'm sorry, I'm at the trap code forum uh, where I kind of moderate that and uh, I will be happy to answer as many questions as I can um, or you can post questions or comments uh, to this tutorial directly in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer as many of those as I can as well. Um, as always, uh, thanks for watching. I hope to hear from some of you guys and until next time, this is Michael Park for creativecow.net.